little bit over three weeks ago, Australia's women's 3x3 basketball team, the Gangaroos, qualified for the Olympics for the first time and Marina Whittle was a big part of that team and I'm really excited to say that she's here to chat all about it with me today. Thanks so much for joining me, Marina. Yeah, thanks so much for having me, Abby. It's been exciting three weeks, like you said, and it's been like an even bigger last like few years with the Gangaroos, so happy to chat about it. I can only imagine, like, you're going to be an Olympian, like, has that actually just like those words sunk in yet? Uh, it hasn't, not quite yet. I'm start like I'm slowly adjusting to it, but I'm sure that when I finally get on the plane and actually land in Paris, it will hit me. Wow, I'm actually so excited. Yeah. <laughs> and you've got a few tattoos already. You're gonna get the rings on after you went. Okay, everyone's asking me about <laughs> it. We actually decided um, as a team that like just like as an extra motivational thing, like if we qualify, we have to get it. If we all go to the Olympics, oh. we're gonna get them. So yeah, I mean, fingers crossed Damon sticks to his, like, promise, but we're all going to get the tattoos together at some point. Yeah, was anyone a bit like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it? Or was everyone pretty keen? Well, we all have tattoos, except Damon. Damon's never had a tattoo and he's a bit afraid of needles. So even after we qualified, like, a few of the conversations was, oh, my God, I don't know. What does a tattoo feel like, girls? And we're like, it's Damon, it's okay. It'll be fine. <laughs> we'll hold your hand through it. <laughs> that sounds like a good plan. Um, I guess before we just, like, chat about the basketball itself I wanted to ask a bit just about the gangaroos and like what they mean and what they represent like I guess yeah yeah no I love the gangaroos I like we've always kind of been um maybe not like front and center when it comes to basketball in Australia because we've got like the five on five culture and the opals are just have an amazing history so just starting kind of in that shadow we've always had to like I guess try and push to be centre stage, to push to get all that attention. And we've always been quite successful, like even in the previous squads have been quite successful. But this crew with Wilson, sorry, Willie, myself, Lozzie and Anneli, we've just like we've just gotten really comfortable like in the grittiness of it and knowing that we do it the tough way. And that's just really created this bond. Damon was like the lead in that. He really like sent us in that direction as well, like, teaching us like hey you got to go through the mud hey this is fine toughness the like the grittiness the mental challenges like he's really about that adversity and about that resilience so when it does get tough we just bond and that's kind of what our culture is like it's it's accountable it's tough it's show up it's just do what you say you're going to do and like and because of that it's just like a very loving very accepting very just cool environment to be a part of yeah, and I guess while there's, like, you know, a few girls, like, in the extended squad, like, the four of you just, like, seeing the way that you all, like, hug and celebrate together after winning, like, the Asian Cup or just, like, qualifying for Paris too, like, do you think the really, like, special bond that you all have just makes you, like, even more successful or? I think so. I think it, like, like you said, it even extends to the entire squad. Like, we've had girls come in, like, Lara McSpadden has been our newest inductee. Um, and I hope that she gets some games soon. We've got Mila Goodchild, Emma Clark, Chloe Bibby, Amy Atwell. Everyone that comes in kind of understands how we move and how we operate. And they've also come out and just like really bonded with the team, like from myself all the way to Mila, who's currently in Queensland. Like everyone is as close as one another. And when they step on the court, it doesn't matter who you are, when you're repping the Gangaroos, when you're representing Australia, like this is how we want to move as one. Yeah, and I guess just, like, having those girls and some of the ones that have, like, joined recently, like, they travel, like, with you when you're competing, not even knowing if they're going to play unless, like, someone gets injured. Like, what does that mean to the group, just, like, how determined I guess they are? Yeah, I mean, that's, like, only fresh. This was the first time that we've ever had, like, a training situation before a tournament where we took Lara and Mila over to uh, Japan with us, which was just so cool. And we had it with... Like we've had some opportunities previously, but this was this year's been a real change for us. And I mean, because three x three is so intense anyway. I think when you step on the court, like everyone has to give their hundred percent because, like, you you just have to put your body on the line. So I think everyone's really grateful for the experience, myself included. But whatever comes from that, like you're just happy with what you've done and like how you perform. So if you, I guess, get the call up, I think the girls are really excited to potentially have that. But they know that they've just like absolutely helped us as best as they can. And we're very appreciative for that. Yeah, definitely. Um and I guess just talking about that final in Japan, I was watching it like um against Canada Live and I was like so <laughs> nervous. Like and then like the buzzer went off and you just kind of stood there and kind of like let out just a huge scream. Do you remember what you were feeling just like in that moment when you realized you'd won? 
Um, yeah, it didn't it didn't feel real at all. Like, and we were three points up with like a second, and I was just stressing and really had to um, have words to us to kind of like keep us all level headed. But I was like, okay, well, I can't let her get off a two, even though like what's a two pointer at that point? So yeah. even when the shot went up, I was like, oh my god, this could be taken away from us in any second. And yeah, it didn't sink in until we were all like jumping around and screaming. And Damon got Damon ran on and they got yanked off. It was um, it was just unbelievable. And just like I've seen some posts that you've like made on Instagram in the past about how the Gangaroos don't really get to, I guess, play in a lot of the other to- tournaments compared to some of the other countries. I guess like kind of mm. like why is that that you don't get to go over as much? Yeah, well, it's like the distance thing as well. A lot of these tournaments are happening in Europe and like the Canadian team, team they've actually been playing 3x3 for like the last like few years yeah. only. So they don't even do five on five, which is crazy. Um, so they're just very dedicated and they're going to all of these women's series where they're playing like France, they're playing America consistently. And like this year alone, we've been to the Asia Cup and we've seen like the Asian region countries, which has uh, been a great challenge. And then we go to this mad international competition where we see Netherlands who they train against France, they train against the Canada's, they train against all these like powerhouse countries. And like we're just unable to do that one because we don't have the funding, um, unfortunately, for three x three in Australia. But then two, just because that these tournaments are just so far away, and that looks so different for Australia right now that we're in like this kind of like development stage for the kangaroos. Hopefully, after the Olympics, that can change and we can start going on the women's series a bit more because I truly believe that the kangaroos can be like a powerhouse internationally. I think definitely. And it's, it's just such an incredible achievement. Like even more when you think about it, the fact that you haven't, you know, gotten used to playing against some of those countries because you don't get to see them as much. Like, have you recognized like that as well? (laughs) Yeah. Like that was our first time ever playing against Canada. They're so good. And they won like quite a lot of women's series tournaments. And like, even when we were prepping against them, we're like, okay, well, we never actually played properly. So wow. And Brazil, we haven't played against Brazil either. So Every time we play them, it's kind of like, um, or when we play new teams, it's kind of like the excitement and the adrenaline keeps us going, but then we just need to like have our own backs and support each other. It's it's very, it's a fun way to live, I guess. Yeah, that's true. Well, hopefully you do get to play yeah. more tournaments after the Olympics, but um, like, I guess I mean, like- It would be so cool. <laughs> yeah, it would be. I mean, I would love to watch one as well. Like if, you know, you guys like came to Australia, I mean, you are playing a few games soon, which is exciting mm-hmm. though. Um, but I guess yeah, like be cool with the drunk game. Sorry. No, 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 it's fine. Sorry. I'm just trying to like not talk over you, but um hope I did it. Um I guess like some people get to kind of have their, you know, like loved ones come over and watch them play in those tournaments and the Olympics as well. And your fiance is your teammate, Annalie. Like how special is that that you get to experience that together as well? Yeah, it is. It's really special. It's just like it's so great. Like we've already talked about the gang, like we have like this awesome bond, but then when the dust settles, like being able to celebrate with my person, like she's the person that I want to speak to after every game. So while I was in Europe and while in the WNBL and all these things. So being able to just like walk directly to her and share and like share that moment with her is just next level. And like even after the qualifying tournament, we went on a holiday in Japan, but we rewatched all those games and like just relived it together and it was just really special so I am assuming the Olympics will be just something we'll talk about for years and years to come um so I just wanted to ask a bit more about Annalie if that's all right like how she had a bit of a tough end to the WNBL finals and then in the 3x3 tournament Mm -hmm. you lost the first game like in the dying seconds and then you had to win every single game afterwards then she scores the winning free throws to defeat Canada just to make playoffs and she ends up MVP of the whole tournament like just how amazing is that I guess to come back from that yeah, it was really awesome to watch as well. I wasn't able to support her in person uh, for the WNBL uh, Grand Final Series, which was so tough. Like, I was on the phone to her. I was watching live at the time, and it was just – it's, like, just such a tough way to finish that last game, and then obviously they didn't get it done the third. So then, like – and that's such a pressurised situation as well. So then, yeah. like, comparing – it's not really comparing apples to oranges because this is, like, international for the Olympics. So when she was on the line – like she knows that we are all behind her 100%, but I was really excited for her when she stepped up because I wouldn't want anyone else shooting those free throws um, at that time. Like I'd put anybody on the line. And so when she stepped up, I was like, you know what, this is actually perfect and I reckon she'll make him. And I had a little word to her when she was at the thing. I said, yep, you're fine. Trust you. 
you got this. And then when she sunk two of them, it was awesome. Mad redemption for him. We we're all very yeah. happy. I just, I'm pretty sure she tried to jump and I just like, <laughs> just totally just landed, caught it. It was great. But it was really awesome to watch her and the growth that she made as a player, like in that moment, I think was really, just really impressive. I'm really proud of the last six months that she's made and that she's been on and she had a really good WNBL season. So I'm happy that I was able to support her like in person as well as her partner. And then, yeah, that Netherlands game was really tough. It was, it was like very challenging as a team after that. We kind of went into a little state and then we had a an honesty session with Damon where we like kind of pointed out all of our mess ups on offense and defense. And I think after that, there was like this major shift in the team and Anneli was, I mean, there's four of us, so everyone was really important in that, but like Anneli was like very big in that meeting as well. And like, obviously it showed in that Canada game, which was awesome. You did go over to Spain because you were playing over there. Like, did you realize just, you know, how important that opportunity was though? Um, For the WNBL. Oh, oh sorry. Me? I guess like when you went over to like Spain, like just why that was such a, like why you wanted to go over there so much, why you thought that was so important? Yeah, yeah. I always wanted to go over when I was, like you always hear about Europe as like a really good playing option and I guess you don't really recognise it until you get over there, like how big the basketball world is, how many different styles are out there Um, and just that challenge, like every game is a really competitive game and I played in Euro Cup as well, so playing in different countries and different like styles and I guess getting to see a little bit more of the world. It was a really impressive, impressive year that like my team had and it was a really exciting year to be a part of. But also on a personal note, like it was a really um, important like challenge that I put to myself. I think I really helped my career and like myself as a human. I think I learned a lot about myself on and off the court this year. And it was, yeah, it was really awesome. And then like Spain as a country is very competitive and it's very like physical and that kind of suits my game as well. So it was a really good time. People are great. Team was great. And um, I don't know if you've seen, but there's like the Spanish team are going to the Olympics as well. And the player who just threw it over her head, there's a really good highlight of it in FIBA. She was my teammate this year. So we'll be oh, playing wow. against my teammates for Spain. So Gosh, that's yeah, quite it's, funny. It's, it's, yeah, it's like it's crazy how small the sporting world is, and I'm sure it's the same in every code, but it's yeah, it's very exciting. I mean, I know that the US also, you know, they'll probably have a few big names, including the number two draft pick, Cameron Brink, who she's just a blocking machine. Are you looking forward to also maybe battling them as well? Yeah, yeah, we didn't get a chance to play them at the World Cup. We um, we kind of like had our eyes set on them, and we didn't even play them in like the pre tournament. So I'm excited to see what team they're going to put out there. Um. I mean, it's just another challenge, right? Like, it'll be impressive to see, like, how we figured out Damon's going to come up with some sort of mix match, how to come up with a scout. I don't know how he does it, but he's going to come up with something, and I reckon that it'll be a pretty good game to watch. Definitely would be. Um, I did also mm-hmm. just want to ask, um, like, just your opinion, like, what you actually think, like, makes a good 3x3 player, because I guess it is, like, quite different to, like, 5x5, five five, like, um, basketball. Yeah, it is. It's a very um, like intense version and a very compact version. So I think if you're looking for a good 3x3 player, I think you've got to be aggressive, both on offense and defense. Um, you've got to be physical. You've got to be not afraid to get nitty gritty and you just got to have a quick turnaround. So like not getting caught up in the refs or not getting caught up in the physicality. If you fall down and get back up pretty quickly, um and I guess I mean our team we've got Lozzie and Willie as point guards and so if you can kind of handle the rock shoot and post up then like skills wise you're fine but it's like I think the shift is like all mental when it comes to 3x3 yeah because I guess as well like I guess not all of the like the players that you see and that will possibly be in pass they're not always always like huge names in like the WNBA or W or like Europe stars as well so that's like it's a different like skill set Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's like a different format. So now it's like creating this world where players who didn't necessarily get the call up to five and five, like myself, can like kind of find their niche in the three x three world and like kind of like it suits different player styles. So that's where I am confident because like more physical, more fast paced, more like intense. You can kind of play a bit more. It's pretty fun. Yeah. I would recommend that you should have a go, Abby. <laughs> Come and play her way. 
Yeah, I did see that comment that you find to the other day. I would be pretty bad at basketball. Um, I don't have, do not have good aim at all. So honestly, at this point, just like throw it up there. It's such a heavy ball. If you just like chuck it up in the right direction, you never know what can happen. Yeah, because it's it's more it's heavier than a like other basketball, right? I think I think I was reading that. Yeah, so it's yeah, it's like so it's the weight of a seven, so a men's size seven, and the size of a women's size six, so that like both uh, genders play with the same basketball. And just a bit more about Paris, I also wanted to ask like just what the plan is. I think we may be chatting about it with it a, a bit earlier. If there's like many tournaments that you're going to be competing in in the lead up. Yeah, so this has been a really exciting thing. So now that we've qualified, uh, we do have a little bit more support. So we're going to go over to, while we're, what like in the last month, uh, FIBA 3X3 has had a women's series going on. So all these countries are over in Europe at the moment playing and there's some stops in China. So we're hoping to get to the China stops um, beforehand. We've only got like two months now. Uh, we've also got the John Kane Arena tournament uh, where we'll be playing against China, some friendlies there at the start of July, which everyone should get tickets to. And uh, we're hoping to go over to Europe sooner so we can play some of those European countries and get like back into the European style before the Olympics. Yeah, that'll be exciting. Um, and just also the Gangaroos won bronze at the 3x3 World Cup last year. Is an Olympic medal something that the team really believes that they can achieve over there? Oh, I have absolute faith in my team. I think anything is possible for us. So I am I'm not going to say I am planning on it, but I am confident that we can achieve greatness at the Olympics. Yeah, well, I hope so. Um, I can't wait. Thanks so much. And I'll also hopefully see you um, in Melbourne at the Bourne tournament because I'm um, hopefully going there. Yeah, that'll be really cool. Thanks for having me, Abby. This has been a great chat. Yeah, thanks so much again. And people definitely should get tickets to that. So. To support Herway, visit the link in the description section.